we'll talk about the arthroscopic anatomic glenoid reconstruction using distal tibial allograft. My name's Ivan Wong. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Burkhart and De Beer in 2000 really have shown us that when you have 30% bone loss, you have a significant risk of having recurrent dislocation after doing a Bankart repair. He found 67% of risk of dislocation as opposed to 4% when you don't have any bone loss. In fact, in more recent studies, we're finding that 10% bone loss is the critical size of which a defect would result in a higher failure rate when you just do a bank heart repair. What's more important is that about 50% of cases are reported to have at least 10% of bone loss. Ladder J is really the gold standard for shoulder instability with bone loss. We know that it can address bone loss. You can use it with soft tissue laxity, but it is non-anatomic and it has a high complication rate, recorded somewhere between 20 and 40 percent. Patients can progress to glenohumeral arthritis and it makes revision surgery difficult. So the ideal surgical technique is something that's arthroscopic, anatomic, has a low complication rate, preserves the subscap, addresses the bone loss, and repairs the bank heart. The bone block technique is as good as a ladder J in that we don't need a sling to make the shoulder stable, as reported from the NEAR Award paper in 2019. We've shown that the learning curve for the arthroscopic glenoid reconstruction can be done in as little as nine cases to make the graft in the appropriate position for the glenoid. Likely, the learning curve is less because doing the anatomic glenoid reconstruction only requires one extra portal compared to the bank heart repair. That's the Halifax portal that's done from an inside-out technique. This technique also addresses the capsule. With the arthroscopic ladder J, the capsule is excised and the shoulder is actually subluxable on top of the graft after the surgery. Whereas the anatomic glenoid reconstruction, the bank out repair is repaired on top of the graft, making the shoulder stable right at time zero. We've also shown that doing the Halifax portal makes it safe, it's away from the nerve. And keeping the subscap and conjoint tendon intact allows you to be absolutely sure that you will not be in contact with the neurovascular structures around the shoulder. We've shown that it has an excellent safety profile. Our early one-year outcomes have shown no neurovascular injuries, no adverse events, readmissions to hospital, bleeding, infection, or implant failure. It does not damage subscap. We've shown that the Halifax portal allows us to put a switching stick superior to subscap and lateral to conjoin, making it safe so we do not have to split the subscap to place the bone graft. We've actually just found our two-year clinical outcomes to be excellent. 66 patients shows no re-dislocation with patients having 30% bone loss and only having one patient with a subluxation with five hardware complications requiring screw removal. We've compared our results using arthroscopic anatomic clonard versus arthroscopic ladder J, which shows exact same union, healing, size, and resorption comparing these two techniques. Hopefully we've been able to show you that arthroscopic anatomic clonard reconstruction has a faster learning curve that's similar to bank heart repair. You can repair the capsule, it's safe, it's away from neurovascular structures, it doesn't damage the subscap, and it's anatomic. It's easier to revise than a previous latter-day surgery.